Good afternoon, boys and girls. I'm going to read our second chapter of Junie B. First Grader, Dumb Bunny. Just want to let you know that I know our um, packet pickup and online learning starts tomorrow. If anyone has any questions, please reach out through Remind to me or um, you'll have Mom and Dad send me a message or you can send me an email um, with any concerns or any help that you may need logging on. All right, chapter two is clothes and nubs. Lucille was still mad at lunch. I just don't get it, she grouched. How could anyone forget the Easter Bunny? The Easter Bunny brings candy right to your door. Lenny did a frown at her. It doesn't bring candy to my door, Lucille, he said. The Easter Bunny is a different religion than me. I'm Jewish. She barely nodded. I'm Jewish too, Lucille, he, she said. I've never even been to an Easter egg hunt before. What do you wear to something like that anyway? Lucille stood up and fluffed herself. Well, since the Easter Bunny and I are the same religion, I'm going to wear a fancy Easter dress, Shirley, she said. Shirley thought for a minute, then she nodded. Hmm, then I guess I'll wear a fancy Jewish dress, she said. Lenny's eyes lit lighted up. Really, Shirley, you mean we can have our own clothing line, he asked. He smiled. Then I think I will wear something fancy, some fancy Jewish pants, he said. My friend named Herbert tapped on his chin. Let's see. Since I'm a Presbyterian, I guess I should wear Presbyterian pants, he said. He turned and looked at me. Presbyterian means we iron out our wrinkles, I think, he said. Just then, Sheldon slapped the table with his hands. Hey, I know. I will wear a fancy turban. A fancy turban is religious clothes, right, he asked. I love fancy turbans. Mr. Scary was listening to us while he ate. He quick put down his sandwich. Boys and girls, you are getting way off track here, he said. Lucille's Easter egg hunt is not a religious party. Really, I've spoken to her mother about it. It's more of a spring picnic with an Easter egg hunt activity. Am I right, Lucille? Yes, she said. My mother said the Easter Bunny isn't even working that day. He's just going to hop around the party and smile and have his picture taken with people. I thought about that for a second. I don't think bunnies should smile, I said. Bunnies have yellow teeth like clown teeth, except bunny teeth are way pointier. Sheldon nodded. My Aunt Bunny has a pointy tooth, he said. She can stab a pickle with it, and the pickle just stays there. All of a sudden, all of us stared at him. Sheldon has the interestingest family I've ever heard of. Lucille did a big breath. Well, I don't care about pointy bunny teeth, she said. Bunnies have cute floppy ears and puffy fluffy tails and itchy twitchy little noses. I kept on picturing her teeth. <clears throat> bunny teeth can nibble your head into a nub, I said. No, they cannot, Junie B. Jones, she said back. Oh, yes, they can. Lucille, whatever your last name is, I said. I saw it on Oprah. Mr. Scary glared at me. I ducked down in my seat and I quieted my voice. Oprah has a lot of numb information, I said very soft. Mr. Scary glared again. I started to squirm. Teachers can spot a fib a mile away. At recess, Lucille told us more about the party. She said that there was going to be lots of delicious food to eat. Plus, also, there was going to be an exciting prize for the Easter egg winner. And wait till you hear this, she said. My daddy's going to hide a real pretend golden egg. And whoever finds the golden egg will win the grand prize of the day. And that is a fabulous play date with me, Lucille. She twirled around and hugged herself. And that's just not any old fabulous play date with me either, she said. The winner is going to get to go swimming with me in my heated indoor swimming pool that we just had enclosed. She did a little shiver and rubbed her arms. Isn't that exciting, everyone, she asked. Doesn't that give you the tinkles? She looked around. Well, doesn't it, huh? Doesn't it make you tinkle all over, she said. All of the children looked curious at each other. Herbert rocked back and forth on his feet a minute. Um... I think you mean the tingles, he said at last. Jose nodded. See, si, Lucille, you definitely mean the tingles, he said. Lucille squinted at those two. Tingles, tingles, whatever. The point is a play date with me gives you goosebumps on your arms, she said. Just look at your arms, people. Don't you see them? Don't you see the goosebumps? All of us looked at our arms. None of us saw the goosebumps. We waited and waited real patient, and then finally, Goosebumps! shouted Sheldon. I see goosebumps, Lucille. He ran to her and pointed. Look, Lucille, see them? See my goosebumps? He asked. Lucille's face beamed very happy. Ooh, Sheldon, those are the goosebumpiest goosebumps I ever saw. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you for those goosebumps, she said. 
After that, she gave him a big hug and she waved her finger at us. Well, ta-ta, everyone, she said. It's time for me to go look at myself in the cafeteria window. Then she shook her shiny hair and she skipped away. <clears throat> Sheldon kept on standing there. He was shocked from the hug, I think. Then all of a sudden, his whole face lighted up and he began to shout, Lucille, wait up. I'll look at myself in the cafeteria window too, he shouted. He took off skipping after her. I smiled to see that. I suddenly think Sheldon has a crunch on Lucille, I said to my friend Herbert. Herb looked at me funny. You mean crush, Junie B. He has a crush on Lucille, he said. I started to laugh. Don't be ridiculous, Herbert. It's definitely a crunch, I said. I'm excellent at expressions. Herb looked funny at me again. I don't know why. After a minute, Sheldon and Lucille skipped past us. There's a picture of Sheldon and Lucille. They were smiling and giggling and chasing each other. Sheldon was calling to her. Come back here, you springy little lamb, he called. I slapped my knee. Springy little lamb, ha! He called her a springy little lamb. That's a hoot, I said. May heard me talking. It's not funny, Junie Jones. Can you see what he's doing, she said. Sheldon is trying to get in good with Lucille, so she'll tell him where the golden egg is hidden. He's just trying to win the play date to swim in her pool. She followed him with her eyes. He's not going to get away with it though, she said. After that, she cupped her hands around her mouth and she shouted after him. You can just forget about it, Sheldon Potts. I'm going to be the one who finds the golden egg, not you. I've got eyes like a red-tailed hawk. I looked at her very curious. May has a lot of bird parts, I believe. Also, she's a cuckoo. And that's not name calling. That's just the truth. So, <clears throat> some funny things happening in the book today. Chapter three is called Waiting and Waiting, and I will read that one for you tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see everyone later. Bye.